I mean, we know that the state has some serious fiscal uh, issues, but we think one of the things that we need to be looking at are ways that we can continue to stimulate the economy, to bring new investment into Hawaii. You know, one of the things that I think we're all really high on is the role that the university can play in that Maui Community College. They're getting their second uh, upper division degree. And the university has the ability to attract a lot of research dollars. And so as we can continue to invest in the university, they're able to recoup more of that to uh, take ideas from the classroom and the research out into the community and really commercialize it and be um, that economic engine, you know, that innovative engine that is going to bring the kind of jobs that we need in our state. So I think one of the things I'm, I'm looking for are ways that we can continue to support the university, support their research efforts like all of the efforts that we've done in the past with the Cancer Research Center. That's looking like it's coming to fruition and we expect to be breaking ground and because of the support that we've all provided to that effort and the university, they've just uh, gotten their uh, NCI designation extended, funded for another year and so we're uh, excited about that aspect of our economy continuing to be very vibrant and help us grow in other areas. Yeah, you know, um, when we look at the budget bill, you know, that's obviously going to be something that you know is going to be critical to us too. Like Senator Baker said, I think we need to continue to look at ways to try to stimulate the economy, and I think we're all in agreement that one of the ways that we can do that is through con construction mm -hmm. spending. And so the three of us have been strong proponents of looking at a lot of the deferred repair and maintenance projects throughout the states, our roads, our harbors. Um, airports, you know, our schools, even our state hospital in Maui. And so again, this year we're going to make a strong push to try to increase the amount of um, capital improvement projects that, you know, th th that, that try to help stimulate the economy throughout the state. So, you know, those are the other types of things that I think we're looking at. Right. I mean, the three of us have, have pushed very hard uh, on the governor and the administration to release the monies for projects that we put in the budget within our county because we know that that creates the jobs that are needed that creates a spending that then helps us to come out of this economic downturn. So, you know, often we would do joint letters to the governor requesting release of monies, requesting uh, information, um, and we encourage the public to call the governor's office, um, call the governor's liaison on Maui and say, uh, you know, what's happened to this project? How can the money's not released? Because our job is to put the, mo the monies in the budget. The governor has to release it. And I think it's really important for the for the public to understand that when the monies that we're talking about are different from operating funds. So when we propose, for example, um, the $25 million for the um, Maui Community College Science Building, which has been appropriated, and my understanding is they're now starting construction, uh, that wouldn't compete with $25 million per se for the public uh, schools and, and you know uh, their operating costs. These are bond finance projects, projects that you basically uh, take out a loan for and, and you build up the facility and you pay it over a, a number of years. And so these are different kinds of funding. I know sometimes I run into people and say, well, instead of spending $25 million, you know, building a new facility, why don't you spend $25 million and put the kids back to school? So it's, a, it's two different pots of money. I think people need to understand that. And, you know, even though there's a, a great concern at the federal level about the level of debt, you know, we are very fiscally, fiscally conservative and frugal here. And our bond rating is excellent. And now is the time that we really need to be using that excellent bond rating to prime the pump so that we get our people back to work and we get some of that uh, money from outside circulating in the community to provide jobs. Because that's really what is going to help move us out of the recession that we're in, is to get people back to work. And that's the quickest way to uh, release funds for these uh, shovel-ready projects. And you know, finally, I mean, we have to understand that so I have a lot of people coming to me and saying, well, you know, you shouldn't go into to debt and you couldn't borrow money to, to balance the budget. Well, our Constitution forbids us from doing that. So we're, we're not like California where, you know, they have to borrow money to pay salaries. Our Constitution says that we have to spend only what we have. So when we talk about a budget shortfall, it means that our projected budget has to shrink to meet what we're projecting to bring in. It's not real money yet. I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're shrinking the budget, so we only can spend what we have. And the general public often gets confused about that, and they think we're spending what we don't have. But reality is, is that our founding fathers and the people that crafted our 
Constitution were very smart about this and said, you can only spend what you have. And that's a real good point. In fact, our Constitution requires us, if we have three years where our revenues exceed our expenditures, to do a rebate. So one of the things that we're looking at this year is creating an alternative so that people don't get a $1 rebate check or a $25 rebate check, that the legislature has the opportunity to take those funds and basically put it into the rainy day funds four years like this where we expect our expenditures to far exceed our revenues. So, you know, we're looking at ways to um, balance our checkbook bas basically the same way that people do it at home. And so uh, what we want to do is be able to save for a rainy day in the future. And the other thing that people ought to be aware of is the rainy day fund really does have some um, fences around it because it takes a, a two-thirds uh, vote of both houses mm -hmm. of the legislature to right. appropriate out of the rainy day fund and it's not something that the executive can transfer out of or we could do it in the budget so it's a it's got to be a real conscious effort and I think that makes us uh, smarter about the kinds of things that we might use that rainy day money for. Interesting. We are um, running out of time. Would you guys like any issues you'd like to talk about right before we run out? Any final thoughts? Well, I'll start off. I mean, you okay. know, I, I know, I know the focus has been ab about the budget and so forth. But you know, I think there are a lot of good things that are happening. Um, you know, we talked about the University of Hawaii. Uh, I just want to remind people that you know the, the University of Hawaii men's volleyball team will be making a trip <laughs> and a visit to Maui soon. That'll be the uh, first uh, men's volleyball match uh, uh, that's been played on the Valley Isle. Uh, that'll be at War Memorial. Um, uh, gymnasium and um, you know I encourage people to take advantage of it you know this is this is I think an opportunity for us to show our support and and realize that the university is not just the University of Honolulu it's the, it's the University of Hawaii and so you know with with the community support you know and with a good attendance I'm sure we'll see more of those types of um, uh, events on Maui in the future the other thing I would just like to add it's been so heartwarming in the community to see people come out in support of teachers and supportive education you know they've communicated with us and I really want to applaud the Maui community for coming together to help uh, people in need to help the homeless to help those that uh, you know need food by contributing to the food bank so we've got a really good Maui community and we just want to want them to stay in in touch and involved with the legislative process as well right and you know for for us, uh, hearing from our constituents is very important. And so when people, you can call us, uh, email us, Twitter us, all of these things, <laughs> Facebook us. But the, the bottom line, though, is that we're at, the, we're at a very short session this time because we've shortened it. And so things are moving very quickly. And it's vital that if you have an issue with any of the bills, don't wait a day. Contact us now because it could change uh, very quickly. Uh, right now, bills, a lot of bills are moving. Um, and because of the shortened schedule, uh, decisions will be made very, very quickly. So contact us if you have an issue so that we can take that into consideration. And we'll have our mandatory five-day recess coming up, and hopefully we'll all be able to get back uh, to the community and have a talk story session with everybody there. We look forward to hearing from all of them. I just wanted to thank you, Senators, for your time. Um, it was a very in interesting episode. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us on this episode of Maui Mana'o. Don't forget, you can contact us, like Senator Inger said, on Facebook, Twitter. You, there's a lot of ways you can come and contact and participate in the legislative process. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Aloha and mahalo.